Hello, today's new toy day. So without further ado, let's open up this Amazon box. It's a new GoPro. I use a GoPro 7 for recording these videos and also for recording my bike rides, walks. As that's now something like four years old, I decided it was time for an upgrade. I know this isn't the latest model, but it was a very good price on Amazon. I think I paid $3.40 plus tax. And the latest version is something like $4.99. Let's see what it looks like. Open her up. So, you pull that strip. And it comes out the bottom. There we are. The box is telling me that the 10 has... 23 megapixel camera, it can shoot 5.3K up to 60 frames a second, and 4K up to 120 frames per second. Supposedly, it's waterproof <laughs> to 33 feet, although I'm not going to be testing that. This is new, I didn't get one of these with my last one. That's rather nice. The ubiquitous USB-C cable, battery, which by the way is not backwards compatible. So what have we got here? Some mounts, which I think that's a sticky mount. I've got hundreds of these things in a little case. And here's the main event, the camera wrapped up and we've got covers on the lens and on the front screen another one on the back screen smells new it's got that new plastic smell to it feels nice very substantial the main difference that I can see straight away is the mounting arrangements you've got these two little prongs that come out on the bottom I'm going to spend some time having a good look at it, try it out, see how it differs from the GoPro 7. I should have ordered all these things at the same time, but a little after ordering the GoPro Hero 10, I realised I was going to need some other things, and this is what's arrived. One of those. And two more items. The SanDisk Extreme Micro SD card. I have got a couple that would work in the Hero 10, but bearing in mind its ability to record in ultra high definition, I felt that a larger capacity card was called for. So you've got to make sure that the spec in particular matches the V30 dipulation. This is a 256 gig. It was, I think, 30 bucks. And in here we have Oh, look at that. Battery life is notoriously poor on these things. So I'm not going to pay a small fortune for GoPro batteries. So I ordered these. They're knockoffs uh, made by a company called Artman. They look pretty similar to the originals. They've got the blue colour on them. They say 10 on the side. And there was three for 48 bucks, which is reasonable. I guess these are going to take a while to charge. I think they are notoriously slow to charge. 
Anyway, there's all three slipped in the box. Close it up. They do give you a USB-C to USB-A cord. So you can plug it in either to your computer, to a power outlet, a charging block, or anything that's going to bring power into the unit and charge the batteries. So I'll do that in a minute. But here's this. This is something else. I realised that with the new style of housing for the camera, it's actually a little bit larger than the GoPro Hero 7 that I'm recording this on. The 7 is 60 millimeters by 45 millimeters. This one is 70 millimeters by 50. Thickness is about the same, but the bottom line is it won't fit inside the plastic housing that I've got for the 7, which I use to attach to my selfie stick. So, I ordered this little kit. As usual, it comes with a mount, a buckle, screw, there's a lens cap, but there's also a battery cover. I'll come on to that in a minute. But this is the item that is what attracted me. I'm just a bit reluctant to use these little fingers, mount them to there, and then screw it onto my selfie stick. The casing is quite nice, it feels good, it's slightly rubbery to the feel, and I don't want to end up dropping it while I'm riding my bike somewhere, it bouncing along the gravel, and then end up looking rather used. So I ordered this. Now I hope this will work okay. It opens at the side here, like that. What they recommend you do is install this replacement side door for the camera. The idea being that when it's in place, unlike the original door, the replacement has a little hatch at the bottom. So you can open that up and slip in a charging cord. Not a bad idea actually. I'm not entirely sure I'm going to do that, but we'll see. So this fits in here, like this. There. That's a nice snug fit. And then that will sit on top of your selfie stick using this uh, screw threaded adapter. So I'm quite happy with that. I would also say that even though the dimensions are slightly larger on the 10 than the 7, it actually feels about the same weight. So I'll have a play around with it, take a few more videos, and I'll let you know what my thoughts are about the performance of the GoPro Hero 10. So how is the camera in everyday use? Well, things I like about it are the feel of it. It's smooth, silky in the hand. It has a greater range of resolution, going from 1080p through 2.7, 4 and 5.3K even. But I'm pretty sure that's going to be a memory card eater uh, and probably a battery eater. 
I like that the frames per second can be anywhere from 24 to 200, although not every option is available with every resolution setting. And the higher you go with resolution, the smaller options you have for stabilization. So it's a case of trying to find a happy medium. Another thing I like is the front screen, which gives you a nice view of what you're taking if you have it facing you, which for a lot of things like this video, I do. Things I don't like about it, it gets hot, gets really quite hot. I don't like the battery life, which I have to say is poor. And if the original GoPro batteries are poor, I can only imagine what my non-original batteries are going to be like. But I'll give it a go. As to this case, I think it's okay, but it's going to mean a lot of dismantling every time I want to change the battery. If I change the battery compartment door, then I can at least charge it without taking the battery out. I can pull videos off it onto my laptop without taking the cover off. But if I want to change the battery, which, let's face it, you're going to want to do out in the field when it dies, you're not going to wait for it to recharge, then I'm going to have to take this Take it off my selfie stick, then I'm going to have to open the little cover, take it out, and then take out the battery. Now, the battery cover, I'm opening that quite easily. A lot of people have had a great deal of trouble finding out how to open it. The reason it is so difficult to open is the camera is waterproof down to 33 feet and since I'm not a diver I have no intention of testing that out. But that's why the cover fits so tightly because otherwise that would be a water ingress point. So you stick your thumbnail in this little thing here and pull down and then the trap door lifts open. And if you haven't quite got it fully closed, the warning is that you'll see a very, very faint red strip still showing. And that's an alarm if you're about to pull on your snorkel. I found this extremely stiff to operate and it does loosen up with time. In fact, what you can do is just pull it in and out with the battery cover open and that will help. So there we are, closed again. So all in all, I do like it. I think it's a great camera. I like the feel of it in my hand, I like the quality of the footage it shoots, and the camera, stills camera with 23 megapixels available, will be a nice option to have instead of taking out my little Sony point and shoot. But I'm yet to explore the facilities available with the camera. In terms of the video, that's what I use these little things for most. And I've set it up so that I've got various presets of quality settings. When you look at the 
touch screen on the back there are various settings that you can choose and you can edit them as well so if there's a particular setting you like for a certain type of activity you can quickly dial it in instead of having to go into the main settings the settings menu in actual fact is slightly different from the earlier versions the seven that I'm using you get the main dashboard to edit your quick settings but then a swipe and the second screen one of which you can use to adjust the uh, connection settings for Wi-Fi but the other is preferences and that's where it all starts to become more familiar again with the various settings you can do time date uh, you reset your SD card but the main settings for the camera are in these presets so choose a preset click edit and from there you can actually scroll right the way down to changing significant settings within the camera at the end of the day the proof of the pudding will be in the eating as they say so I plan to use this on one of my upcoming bike rides and we'll see what the quality of the footage looks like.